Welcome to the last video in this year's Beetle Gust. And if this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, that means I've made Beetlejuice themed videos all August long. It's time for the Maitlands to arrive back home and I really hope they like what I've done with the place. If you have seen my recent redoing my Beetlejuice doll video, you will know that I had some issues in making Beetlejuice himself. I need to be careful how many times I say his name. Making a poseable body from scratch is really difficult. Thankfully, I recently met Maya of Misfit Doll Co. She's the one who made Mini Aira, and she also made the mice that are in my borrower type project. I contacted her and asked her if she could make a poseable doll body in which I could still sculpt the face. Now don't get me wrong, the faces that are available for Maya's dolls are beautiful and really fun to look through, but I had already hand sculpted Beetlejuice and I wanted that theme to continue at least through the main characters. I wanted them to be hand sculpted by me and Maya totally delivered. I am super excited to work on these next dolls. They're going to be Barbara and Adam Maitland, the original owners of the house. So pre-warning, the dolls you're about to see don't have faces. And stay tuned for a giveaway from Misfit Dolls at the end of this video. As I said, these dolls don't have faces, so they're going to look a little strange, but the nice thing about this face is that it does have the lines marked out for where the eyes and the mouth need to go, and it makes the sculpting process just a little bit easier. This one is going to be Barbara, who was played by Gina Davis, and she has a very distinct bone structure. She has great cheekbones and an awesome jaw, so I really wanna work hard to get this doll's face looking as close as possible. For this, I'm going to be using paper clay. These dolls cannot go in the oven, so I can't use polymer clay. You can also use epoxy sculpt. I did do a test doll, which hopefully you will see in the future sometime, but I am more comfortable sculpting with paper clay. That's just something that I have worked with more often, and so that is what I am going with. I sanded the face and I'm using glue anytime I'm adding more clay and this is going to make a really nice adhesion between the clay and the resin body of the doll. Whenever I sculpt faces, I try to let you know that I am not a professional face sculptor. I just kind of go with the flow and pick out features that stick out to me. So for this doll, I started with the nose and then I added some little balls of clay for where the eyes are going to be. And then of course I had to get started on that bone structure, so I'm adding a snake of clay around the jawline so that I can smooth that into the face. And really the whole time I'm just kind of mushing the clay around until I think it looks right. This is a much longer process than you're going to see in the video because there's a lot of looking at it, letting it sit for a second, and then deciding whether it's right, looking at it from the front, and then looking at it from the profile. And even still, I think I am not as great at getting the dolls to look correct from the profile stance. I'm getting a little bit better. These two faces that I'm sculpting today are some of the better faces that I've ever sculpted. They're still not going to look super duper accurate to the actors, but they're closer than I think I've gotten previously. I have learned to add the brow line that is really important and is definitely a human feature. And so sometimes in the past I would have forgotten to add the brow line. I just added the eyes and then that was it. But I think it helps define the face a lot. Once I'm happy with how Barbara's face is looking, I can use a tiny bit of paper towel and sand it down. If you don't know, paper towel can work as a very, very, very fine sandpaper, and I find it works really well on top of the paper clay and on top of paint if you want to work on top of acrylic paint and you want to smooth out some of the paint lines. I mixed up some acrylic paint that I felt matched the color of the resin printed body and went over the paper clay. This is how it's looking so far. So now we need to paint on a little bit more of her facial features. So I'm going to add some blush. 
And even though both the characters I'm making today are technically ghosts in most of the movie, uh, they still have pretty good complexions. They have a lot of color in their face. Barbara has these pinkish red lips, so I'm trying to fill those in as well. I'm going to be using a toothpick and a very fine dental tool to apply paint in some of these areas because the facial features are just very tiny. I really need to get one of those brushes that's like a single bristle to help work on these, but at the moment a toothpick and a dental tool is working okay. The part where it starts getting really difficult is where I try to put on the eyeliner. It does get kind of smudged when I first try it out and then I kind of figure out a process and it doesn't look too bad in the end. So while Barbara dries completely, we can work on Adam. Here's Adam's body. And I do have the body for Lydia, which I have, it's in pieces, so that I could try to string it together myself. Maya from Misfit Dolls also sent me some of these blank faces that I could possibly use for Lydia. They're really pretty, so it's going to be very tempting to use those instead of sculpting it myself. Um, here's the directions for how to put it together, but that will have to wait for possibly December. <laughs> But for now, we will work on Adam, who was played by Alec Baldwin. And I did find a picture of him not wearing his glasses because glasses can kind of distort the face or make the eyes look a little bit bigger than they are. So I am going to try to sculpt the face without glasses because I'm going to add those on later on. I did struggle a little bit more with Adam's face and I don't, I, I don't know why. I think Gina Davis just has so many more defining, very distinct features that it was easier to get a doll that specifically looked like her but I'm definitely still going to try my best here. Um, you will notice that I'm taking a different approach to sculpting Adam, whereas I started with the nose on Barbara's face, I'm starting with the brow line and the mouth area for Adam. I do eventually add the nose because I feel like the nose is very important to the central part of the face to really kind of have all the other features go around. Like I said, I'm, <laughs> I don't ever really know how to describe what I'm doing. I'm just adding clay. I will put a link to an amazing channel down below in the description if you want to learn how to sculpt a face. Juliana Lapine has multiple videos. Sometimes she even does live streams to walk you through sculpting a face. So she is the one I would go to to learn. I'm just adding in some cheekbones until I feel like it looks kind of like Adam. And then he needed some ears. I didn't add ears onto Barbara because her hair is going to cover where the ears are going. So there was just no point in sculpting them, but you will see Adam's ears. So I'm adding those in now as well. Applying the hair to these dolls is going to be really interesting, especially because they have head caps. The head caps are where the strings all come together to hold their body together, so they're really important. I have just never applied hair to one of these before, so it'll be an interesting process. Once I was happy with the general look of the face, I started to sand it to try and get the paper clay as smooth as possible, and then I could use that same paint I mixed up for Barbara's face on Adam's face. And I will say in these clips, he does kind of look very young. It kind of looks like a little kid's face, but I do think that when I add the painting part of it, it does age him a bit. At least I hope it does because I don't want it to look like he's a giant five-year-old. Um, <laughs> but that's part of the process when it comes to creating people. You have to kind of work around some of those things of like, okay, now this looks like an older person or this looks like a younger person and why is that? What features did I add that made them look that way? And it's just a whole process. Making miniature people and miniature dolls is something that you can, I think, spend your whole life trying to perfect. After the initial painting of the features, I did a little bit more shading and this was their final look. I think Adam will look a lot more closer to the character when I'm able to add his clothing, glasses, and hair very soon. The faces are sculpted and painted, so now we can work on their clothing. Saying that it was difficult to find the right fabric for Barbara's dress 
is an understatement. It was incredibly difficult because she has such a small, delicate print on her dress, but it still gets washed out. However, when you go into miniature, it's, it's hard to find something like that without the print being really bold. So I was lucky enough to realize that the back side of this bold pink flower print looked a lot closer to what I wanted her final dress to look for, so I went for that instead of some of the other prints I had as an option. I'm going to make the process of creating her top very easy for myself by making it with this folded over piece of fabric. It basically is the shape of a T that I traced around her body. And if it's the right size, I'm just going to be able to join the two sides and have a small shirt. I do need to create a place for her head to go through so I can check if this is the right size shirt for her. So I'm just going to fold the T in half and cut out a neck area. Then I could slip it over her head and check if I think this is going to work. The way I do this is I make sure that the fabric will go around her limbs and her body and there is a little bit room for me to add the hem or basically attaching the two pieces of fabric. I'm using glue for this. I'm using some tacky glue with my clover iron, which is a very small iron that helps me do these delicate connections. I first add a line of glue. This is just going to be hemming the bottom of the shirt. Then I fold it over and I can use the clover iron to attach it together. If you do decide to get yourself a clover iron, I do always have my materials and tools linked in the description box of my videos. However, I always add a note with the clover iron. It does get very hot and it could be a danger of you getting burned if you're not careful while using it. So keep that in mind. Once I've connected all of the fabric pieces, I can turn it inside out and do a test fit on Barbara. I did realize this was not going to work even though her arms are very poseable. It was just going to be too hard to get her arms and her head through the bottom of the top. So I sliced up the back which will be easy to mend later so it's easier to get on and off as I'm putting the shirt together. At this time I was also checking that her arms were still poseable because sometimes using cotton fabric like this can decrease the poseability of these types of dolls. Because I'm happy with the fit, I can go ahead and add a little trim around the back edges that I cut into the shirt. To do this, I'm just adding some glue and folding over a matching piece of fabric. Now I need to create the skirt that goes onto the top and this is going to make one whole dress. I'm trying to figure out how long it needs to be and then I'm going to hem the bottom of that piece of fabric. I have to match up the two pieces so that they are the same length. For this process, I'm using a needle and thread that's being sewn back and forth through the top part of the skirt piece of fabric. This is going to allow me to bunch it up smaller than it is, creating some wrinkles along the top part of the skirt. I'm pushing the edge of the fabric in along the string and I'm doing this until the top part of this piece of fabric is the same length as the bottom part of the shirt. And I'm also trying to keep the wrinkles fairly even, although that is kind of difficult in this scale. Once I'm happy with it, I can attach the skirt to the bottom of the shirt that I have previously hemmed. And then it's not making miniature clothes until you realize you've put something on backwards, so I ripped that off and then glued it back on. This was a little bit difficult to remember that I want the back side of the fabric to be seen. Once I tried it back onto Barbara, I realized it was way too long and I needed to hem the skirt a bit more and the shirt was too long as well. The hem that matches the shirt with the bottom part of the dress needs to be up more near her hip bones. The glue does hold rather well. As you could see, it was a bit of a struggle to take it back apart, but it is possible to rip it apart and try again. So I hemmed up the bottom of the shirt and then hemmed the bottom of the skirt part a little bit more and attached them back together. Now the fit should be much more like it is in the movie. It sits right on her hip and is still a very loose fitting dress. I also made sure to check that she could sit in the dress, which is very important as she is a poseable doll. Now I can add another fold of fabric along the back part of the dress skirt, and I did decide to permanently close up the back of the dress. I still will be able to get her body in through the top of it. 
So I'm just going to glue those together and then again use my clover iron to set that glue. Using the clover iron in this fashion really helps me move through these clothing projects rather fast. At this point I realized the skirt was looking a little bit too perfect so I decided to iron in some wrinkles. You can see in the movie version of her dress she does have a lot of pleats coming down the skirt and so I decided to iron in a few of those and I think it does look a little bit more like it should. Now for my least favorite part of any piece of clothing, I'm going to add the collar. It's just a double folded piece of fabric that I'm folding over the collar area. I am having to do this in four pieces to get it to look correct. I should have hemmed the end of the sleeves early on before I put the shirt together, but I did not. So I'm just going to carefully add some glue inside the end of the sleeve turn it inwards and then use my iron to cure that so that I have a hemmed sleeve. I will do that better on Adam's outfit. I also added this little fake piece of fabric in the center that is covering up the buttons on her dress. In the reference I was looking at, you couldn't really see the buttons, so I'm just going to leave it plain. In the movie, you can see that Barbara has the sleeves of her dress pulled up and because I'm not going to be able to glue this to her arms because I don't want anything stopping her from moving her arms, I've decided to use the same needle and thread method to go up the back of the sleeve. I'm going to do this on both sides of the sleeves and then once the dress is on her body, I should be able to tie the string tight and it will pull the sleeves up. I was also thinking at this time that I was going to sew the dress shut and that's why you see so many strings back there, but I ultimately decide not to do that. I do end up gluing it, so I take the strings out. But before I do that, here's me pulling the strings tight along her arms. This helps to give the bunched up sleeve look without having to attach it to her body. I tied this tight with a couple knots and then added a dab of glue so it wouldn't come undone and then I could cut off the excess string. As I said, I decided not to sew up the back of her dress so I decided to just use glue and I'm very shortly adding the iron to it. I don't want to do it too long because it could melt the doll so I'm just very quickly pressing it in so that it will cure the glue. I also glued the front of her dress to her chest plate. This won't impede her movement, but it does help her collar fit a little bit better to her body. Now it's time to make Barbara's shoes. She wears these little ballet flats and they're kind of hard to see. At times it looks like she's barefoot. I wanted to make them look very thin and close to her foot, so I am using masking tape to build up this shoe. It makes it a little bit easier to just basically put material in place where you want the shoe to be, but I did find after a while it got more and more difficult to cut the masking tape down. However, this technique did work fairly well overall. Once I'm happy with the shape I was able to get around the foot, I am going to cut out a sole for the shoe, and this is just a very thin piece of masking tape that I'm going to put around the edge of the shoe. I wouldn't trust masking tape to stay in place on its own, so I'm going to cover everything with a layer of Mod Podge. This is going to bind all of the masking tape pieces together and seal them before I start to paint. Here's how they are looking so far. As I said, this is a pretty simple method, but I think it worked okay. I'm going to be painting these with a pink to match her dress. This does end up being kind of a bright pink and I will repaint it a little bit later so that it's more of a muted pink. But I do think it's the soles that are made with a masking tape that really bring these to life as shoes. After the painting's done, I added one more layer of Mod Podge just to protect my paintwork and to extra ensure that these shoes are not going to be falling apart at any point. So here's Barbara's outfit and her shoes all complete. The last thing I'm going to do is paint in her hairline. She has dark brown hair, so I'm just going to be painting this in with dark brown paint. I started going along the edge of the head cap and then I went a little over the edge and this really did help blend her entire head together and it will help hide that connection between the two pieces. The head cap is where all the strings in her body come together, so it's important that it's there. Now we can work on Adam. These are the fabrics I found for Adam's outfit, and I'm really excited to get started. 
He has this little bit of a red shirt that's showing through at the top of his collar, so I'm going to start by adding Mod Podge on the back of this red fabric. This is going to fray check the fabric so that I can cut out a circle and put it around his neck kind of like a fake collar. Well, it is a fake collar. <laughs> Then I can move on to his checkered shirt, which I'm starting the exact same way that I did Barbara's top. It's just a T shape, except this time I am going to hem the edges of the sleeves before I put the shirt together. I used to do a really complicated process of making basically vest pieces for the shirt and making the sleeves separate, but honestly, this is such an easier way to make a shirt with sleeves that I'm so excited I've started doing this now. I've added the collar onto his shirt in the very same way I did before, and I'm adding that fake button cover that goes down the front. Adam has two pockets that are on the front of his shirt, so to create that, I'm just going to glue together a piece of fabric. This is going to fray check it on either side, and then I can cut out the pocket shape. This is an easier way to make a pocket. He doesn't actually have anything showing that's in his pocket, so I don't have to worry about that. But if there was, I could just glue it in place before I glue the pocket down. Here's how it's looking on the front of the shirt. There's gonna be one for each side. Now I can check the shirt on Adam. I did notice he needed a little bit of an extension on the back of his shirt, so I just added some more fabric, and when the shirt is closed, you won't even notice. Here's how it's looking. Again, I'm checking that he can still pose. Here's the back closed up and you can see that extension kind of like a V shape. He ended up having some wide hips. <laughs> For Adam's pants, I need my sewing machine. I get my sewing machine out as little as possible, but it is going to be helpful for this. Because I want him to be able to sit and stand and move around, it's going to be much better for me to sew the pants and use a stretchy material for this. I am going to be using this old t-shirt and I thought my fellow Whovians might like this reference. This t-shirt's very old and unfortunately the picture is starting to come off. It's gone through the wash. I've worn it. My daughter's worn it. It's had a great life, but now it's going to become Adam's pants. Maya from Misfit Dolls told me that worn clothes make the best doll clothes, and so I found this was very true when I made the clothes for the mice in my project you saw earlier. So I am going to do the same thing here. So he has some stretchy pants that he can move around in and it won't limit his poseability. All I really do is sew lines along the dotted lines I previously drew out. Then I can cut just along the seams that I made. By doing this, it means that my seam allowance is very small and it won't make my pants too much larger along the sides. I can turn them inside out and now test them on Adam. Thank goodness he's finally got some pants. They do end up looking a little fluffier, kind of like sweatpants, but hopefully I can fix that by the end of making these. I also made a little set of bloomers for Barbara, just because she's going to be in a dress for the rest of eternity. I think these will make her a little more comfortable. At least I like shorts under a dress. That's personal preference. <laughs> to hem the bottom of the pants, I'm just using some glue and again the iron. The reason I'm doing this here is because the bottom of the pants really don't need to stretch and so if it's limited by the glue, that's not a problem. And then I hemmed the top of the pants so that they fit right on Adam. Once I had them back on the doll, I could add a little glue. I did this along the hip areas and then in the front and the back. So I really only glued in four places. I did not glue all the way around. But this will keep his pants up. Now he does have a little bit of what I would call grandpa pants going on right now. I'm hoping I can bring it in a little bit more with a belt. I'm using some fabric that I previously painted with black paint and Mod Podge. This kind of gives it a leather type look and I'm going to glue this around his pants. As I'm doing this, I'm pulling it tight so it does pull in a little bit more to his waist. These do still look like kind of big pants, but I think it'll be okay. We're moving forward. To help these look like the belt is going through belt loops, I cut off a little rectangle of fabric, covered the back with glue so it would fray check it, and then glued it over the belt. I did two of these in the front and two in the back so it looks like his belt will stay in place. 
I also added a faux zipper area in the front of the pants just to give it a little bit more detail. Moving on to his shoes, I decided to paint his ankles white just to give the appearance of socks. If he is sitting down and his pants come up at the ankles, it looks like he's wearing socks. I'm making his shoes with the same masking tape method that I did for Barbara. I'm starting with a piece of masking tape that I folded over on itself and then cut out a tongue shape for the top of the shoe. I glued it to the top of the foot and I made sure it was not glued to the area that looks like it has socks because I want the foot to be able to bend back and forth. Then I can take a smaller piece of masking tape and I'm going to wrap that around the foot which is going to help the glue stay in place as well while it dries. Then I can follow the same steps of just wrapping bits of tape around starting at the back of the ankle and moving forward until I like the shape. You can add on as many layers of tape until you like the thickness of your shoe. And that's what I did here. I just worked until I liked the shape. And then of course, cut the shape at the front for the toe and add the long skinny piece of masking tape that's going to be the sole of the shoe. Do not skip this part or else the shoe just kind of looks like a sock. I covered it all with Mod Podge and then painted everything black, I think. I'm, it's hard to tell from the movie, but I'm pretty sure he's wearing a black shoe to go with his black and white check shirt. So here are Adam's final shoes and of course his outfit ready to be finished. I also, just like I did for Barbara, I need to paint his hairline. I made sure to pull up the reference to make sure I got his sideburns correct, but it's pretty similar to where I just painted the head cap. And this is where I accidentally put my brush in black paint and didn't realize it, but I do fix it. And then again, I went over the head cap line so it kind of blends in with the rest of the face. I know what some of you are going to ask, what about their scary faces? And also what about when they're in their wedding clothes and kind of decaying really rapidly? Well, that's a good question. I don't know yet, but these dolls would be very difficult to remove their heads and put new heads on. So I'm either going to have to make some kind of mask or I'm going to reference those forms that they take in the movie in some other way in the project. For now, I'm just going to stick with their original looks that they are in for most of the movie. So let's wrap this up by making their hair. I'm going to be using the same color viscose material for both Barbara and Adam's hair. I've had this for quite a while and I'm excited to finally be able to use it. I saw a video that suggested using water with a bit of conditioner and I don't know why, but the conditioner is still a chunk in there. <laughs> I tried to mix it together. But this is going to allow me to get some curls into this hair for Barbara. Barbara has quite curly hair. And so what I'm doing is wrapping it around an old piece of tubing, and then I'm spraying it with the water with a bit of conditioner in it. And I'm going to let that sit and dry for a while. Once that's dry, I can easily slide it off of the tube and I have these little ringlets. Barbara doesn't have ringlets, she just has curly hair all over, so I'm going to have to change these and use them in a different way from how they are now. To do this, I am pulling them apart and this is going to help them become a little bit just more like wavy hair. It's not going to be quite like the curls that you see that Gina Davis has in the movie, but I think they'll give a similar effect and hopefully work for this doll. I am putting her in some creepy cloth and then shoving her into a mug. This is going to hold her still and in the upright position while I work with the viscose. I added a little bit of tacky glue at the base of her head and then I'm just adding the hair on a bit at a time. I am adding all of this hair to the head cap because in the event that she has a string break and needs to be restrung, I'm going to have to remove the head cap to get to those strings. I kept moving little by little up the head and once I got to the center part I added some glue and then I am going to have the hair go to one side of her head. I let that dry, add some more glue, and flipped it over. This helps hide the glue line and gives her more of a part. Now I'm not really sure Barbara has a part in the top of her hair, but I do love how much this technique helps to hide the glue. I'm doing this on both sides. This is how her hair looks so far. I also decided to glue the hair down to either side of her face. 
and then I immediately realized this goes against my just glue it onto the head cap theory, but this just means that if I do have to replace her strings, then I'll have to do a little cosmetic surgery to her hair. But at the moment, I think it's looking pretty good. And here is Barbara's final look. Now we can work on Adam, give him some hair, and also he needs some glasses. I'm doing the same technique where I'm putting him into the mug and I'm gonna start at the base of his head. It's very much the same process, it's just with shorter and straighter hair. Earlier you may have seen me use this water solution with this paintbrush as I was working on Barbara. This is water mixed with a little bit of tacky glue and it kind of works as doll hair gel to help everything lay down smooth while I'm working on the hair. Most of his hair is going to be attached to the head cap, but I do have his sideburns being attached to his face. I do have to lay them down into the head cap, but I will just kind of have to cut that part through if I do ever have to fix his strings. For the front part of his hair, I'm laying down a bit of viscose and letting that dry. And then once it is dry, I can pull it forward, which is going to make the part of his hair that is sticking up. This is kind of a tricky process to show on camera because I'm just really playing with the hair until I like how it looks. But you can see as I've cut it a little bit longer than it needs to be, it's already starting to look like the hair that you see on Alec Baldwin in the movie. I do the same thing to the other side, but cut it just a little bit shorter. He does have a little minor part on one side. And this is the final look for his hair. I also made him some glasses, just like I did in the video where I made Dollhouse Dad. I will link that below because I somehow did not film the process of this, even though I meant to. But I did film the process of me attaching the glasses to his head. So I cut them short, and then once I had them pressed to the front of his face, I cut them even shorter with a pair of flush cutters. And then I could add some glue to the back of the glasses and carefully put them so I felt like they were in the right place and let them dry. So right now there's just glue on the front of the glasses. Once that was dry, I could move the ear pieces, add some glue over there, and then push them into place. So now the glasses have three points of glue attaching them to his head. And here are the Maitlands, Barbara and Adam, and I'm fairly happy with their look. I think Barbara's looking a little bit more Tim Burton-ish with her large eyes. Here they are compared to Beetlejuice, and now Beetlejuice's head just looks really tiny for some reason. <laughs> but these are my three main characters so far. It is time to put them into the project and to put everything else that goes onto the first floor. This is going to be the first time you're going to be able to see everything all together, all at once. So I'll finally be quiet for a little bit and then let you enjoy the process. Without further ado, it is now time to add the Maitlands back into their home. They finally walked back through that portal from the netherworld and are just now realizing that this is their house and it is not looking like it used to. 
Adam looks rather annoyed and Barbara looks a little confused. She's wondering where her horses are at. But that is my recreation of the scene from the movie with Adam and Barbara and I'm pretty happy with the results. Of course, I had to also put them in a few other places around the Beetlejuice house. Stormy's helping me put a few more characters into the waiting room to get a few pictures. It's not completely set up and the lights aren't hooked up at the moment, but I was happy to get them in there and you can see some familiar faces from a past Beetle Gust. And you may even spot mini Aira just, you know, hanging around. I did have one more house come in this week. This is from Marisol, and it is the house that Charles sees out the window. And thankfully, since Adam's here now, he can help me get all these dioramas under control. So that's all I have for you in this video and for the month of Beetle Gust. It's been a wonderful few videos, and I feel like I got so much done. And I definitely think this year would be fun to do Dietz, uh, Dietz Ember. Dietz Ember. It's hard to say that, December, where I can make Lydia since I already have her doll form. Now for the giveaway, as promised, Maya has very kindly offered to give away one of her custom dolls. If you win the giveaway, you can choose from a 112 scale or 124 scale doll. You can choose their face, the resin color, their body type, and really get a custom posable doll for your own project. The doll will come unfinished, and if you want to read all the details, there is a form that you need to fill out in the description box below that tells you everything. Speaking of the form, there's three things you need to do to enter the giveaway. First thing, either like or comment on this video. That really helps me out. You can do either or, or you can do both. Please make sure to follow Maya on Instagram. I will put her Instagram link in the description box along with the form, which is the third thing you need to do. You have to fill out the form to be entered because that is the contact information that I will contact you through if you win. The winner will be chosen by a random number generator, and I will announce that on my community tab when the winner is chosen. So thank you so much, Maya, for working with me on creating these custom sculptable dolls. And thank you for doing this giveaway through my channel. I really hope you enjoyed this Beetle Gust month. I know it feels like it's getting cut a little bit short, but I have two months now to get ready for the museum. The captain's quarters is going to the museum when I go pick up the Adams Family House. So I've got a lot to do and I need to get going on that. But I'm so happy that I took time out for this project. I love this project and I know you all are loving it so much too. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I feel like, I feel like we can fill it out, this board over here. Oh, I gotta move the camera. I feel like we can fill it out to at least a third, a third of the project done. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> we still have two thirds to go. Still a lot of work to do. Still more dolls to make. There's still a lot of project to come, but I believe a third of the project is done so far. And that's a really cool feeling. Thanks for following along with me during this journey. Happy Beetle Gust. You were so helpful. Yeah, you helped so much.